Hey guys, um, this is going to be kind of a short tutorial on how to actually art direct the, the an explosion or a streaming, um, you know, direction wise. And this is not the first time I've been talking about this stuff, but I have come with a, out with a new and I think better setup, which uh, is mostly more simple and is also most more directable, which is I think uh, really important stuff. So uh, let's just check this out. This is a tip all the time exploding, and you can see that uh, the actually the spout goes up quite a lot, and the other stuff just breaks down on the ground, except these guys who are flying away. So the way to do it in this kind of setup is using uh, velocity volume. So this is a geosphere with an added poly on top that I have centered on my teapot, and the actually. Uh, shape of this juice here is defining where the stuff is gonna go. So if I you know extend this thing here to the side and if I play this back you see that it's gonna fly mostly in this direction. So this gives me uh, the possibility to, uh, to direct and shape it as uh, much as I want. And setup wise, it's very simple, which is, I think, a uh, nice virtue. And I've been trying recently to make my setups uh, more and more simple, uh, just to be order to be able to reuse them um, uh, easier and to be able to tweak them much easier. So uh, all this stuff is just completely ordinary: object to particle, the volume breaker, um, gravity, and shape collision. Um, the only smart stuff is. Uh, like relatively is here in this dynamic set and I'm just gonna rebuild it now for you so it starts of course with my particles the level 1 fragmentation and I have here if I go to wireframe you'll see that there is a explosion origin node so I'm gonna bring this node in dynamic sets and I'm also gonna bring my velocity volume. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give initial velocity to these fragments. So I set this up. And the direction of this velocity is going to be from these um, explosion origin, which is kind of the bomb actually in the setup, outwards. So to do this outwards, to get this outwards direction, I'm going to use a distance. So this distance is going to be between my node, the explosion origin, and the particles, which are actually these yellow fragmented guys, so it's going to be outside from each, this is going to be a vector, this direction is going to be a vector from the bomb point towards each of these um, particles and going upwards. So there's going to be a direction of velocity, and now the speed is the cool thing where the velocity volume comes in. So what I'm gonna, what I'm doing is that every one of these particles is gonna get a speed along this direction, you know, outwards from the bomb, which is proportional to the distance between uh, the, the the particle, you know, the yellow particle, and the surface of the volume velocity volume mesh in the direction of its uh, velocity, which means it's the direction from the bomb out. So I'm gonna actually uh, get a vector uh, out from the bomb through the particle and to the surface of this mesh. So the distance between the particle and the mesh surface is gonna be uh, my speed, and that's why uh, the, the, the portions of the, uh, you know, the particles who, who actually have this vector uh, somewhere here, uh, are gonna move out faster and I'm gonna be able to sculpt uh, portions that are actually f farther away or closer to the teapot and this is gonna give me farther or closer speeds I mean I mean higher or lower speeds 
Okay, so let's set this up with an intersection node. So it can be intersect node, and I'm going to intersect from the particles towards the velocity of our node in exactly the same direction as the velocity is. And I'm going to get the distance of the intersect node, but first I will set the speed high because I only need distance and set speed as a length. And I'm going to check two sided on because um, otherwise I'll need to flip the faces of uh, you know the normals of the this volume. So then when I have the distance, I'm going to just have a couple of floats which is going to be an offset and a multiplier, which is the usual thing I do with these number scalar stuff. Let's say the multiplier is 2 and the offset could be 0. So now let's see how it's going to work. You see that I have stuff happening uh, in this direction. It's not too much. So let's Increase the multiplier, and you can see now how I have stuff flying off in this direction. So imagine I did, I don't want this to happen. I want something else. I can just turn it off, turn off the edit poly, and apply one more on top. And let's say I want this time the pieces to fly away, you know, radially. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna Take this with some soft selection and scale them out like that. And I want, for example, the ones at the top, the piece at the top, to not fly away too much. I can go into the paint the form. Actually, sculpt something. Probably guys at the bottom also. So many kind of you know, shape. Maybe some variation on the sides also. So whatever, something like that. And if I now play it back, you're gonna see that this is exactly exactly what happens. I get a big, you know, wave in towards the sides, and not much happening with the lid this time. Now the cool thing is that I can use this offset and multiplier to do different things. For example, if I bring down the offset, you'll see that I'm gonna get the thing filtered to only you know have the 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 guys who are stronger influenced who have you know the farthest mesh vertices outlying we like have something like that for example or if I increase the multiplier that's just gonna define the different maximum speed so 1.2 is not too much and you know, 17 is really going to blow it away. Oh yeah, that's it. Then. So this is the setup. Um, I think it works really well uh, and I hope you guys you know, make nice use of it. Till the next time, ciao.